Um, same again, I've just put the details from the question um, straight into this uh, pro forma sheet just so that you can see the key pieces of information. Um, obviously the date, the DR, you've got a sextant altitude and obviously index error and a height of I there. Um, the first thing we need to do obviously is find the GMT of Merpass. That will allow us to get the declination and then it will allow us to do that calculation with the MZD at the end. Um, for the sun, the simplest way to get Merpass really is just looking in the bottom right hand corner of the page because um, here on the 2nd of October you can see that the LMT of Merpass is 1149. And you'll also notice that there's no um, sign of a change with latitude here. So latitude doesn't actually affect that LMT. And the reason is that when Merpass happens, it's happening on the whole meridian, regardless of the latitude. If the body is on your meridian, there's, there's no grey area there. There's no change that, that latitude will bring about in that. Um, if it's on your meridian, it's on your meridian. And if it's not, it's not Merpass. So the simplest way for the sun would be to get that LMT and then um, with the longitude we've been given in the question, in this case 32 degrees 20 west, divide that by 15 and you end up with um, 2 hours 9 minutes and 20 seconds. Now for the purpose of a Merpass observation, we only actually need the time to the nearest minute. So I'm quite happy to just disregard that 20 seconds because I'm really interested in this two hours and nine and nine minutes and I can apply that to 11.49 to get my GMT to the nearest minute. So um, we can actually do this here. So if the LMT is 11.49 and my LIT, obviously it's west, so I'm going to be adding it on, is two hours and nine minutes. And again, I'm disregarding that 20 seconds. I'm going to get a GMT of 13.58. So that is quite a simple way of finding the GMT of Merpass.